Welcome back to the program. Thanks Glad for being be here. here. Thanks. Uh, last time I saw you, you were getting berated by a bunch of Bernie Sanders supporters at the Democratic National Convention. Uh, you were giving a speech to the Wisconsin delegation, and uh, you came outside to do interviews, and you were basically shouted down for your yeah. support of the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Are you still supportive of that agreement? Well, first of all, that's the beauty of democracy. People <laughs> have a free speech right to come out and petition their government, including elected officials like myself. But listen, trade has been very difficult to talk about this election environment. Obviously, you have both major presidential candidates that have uh, denounced the Trans-Pacific Partnership Trade Agreement. But I think realistically, most people back home here get the importance of it. We're just 4% of the world's population. Of course, we're going to be trading with other nations. To me, it makes sense that we're at the table establishing the rules, the standards, the values in these trade agreements. So we have tools then to enforce them. So we're elevating those standards up to where we are, to level the playing field for our workers and our businesses and our farmers back home so they can more successfully compete in a very competitive global marketplace. And TPP, the Pacific Rim uh, Trade Agreement, I think is important for us to be involved in because it's the fastest growing uh, economic region throughout the globe. And uh, we're already trading with these nations, but right now we're trading with them with no rules at all, which is a race to the bottom. And no one should be happy with the status quo. So by going no on this, we're right back to a system where we don't have any rules to enforce, which has been a race to the bottom, or we cede that ground to China. And China would love nothing better than to establish the rules of trade in the Pacific Rim area. Then we're on the outside looking in, trying to compete. And that, too, I submit, would be a race to the bottom. So there's work to be done there, but I think this is very important, not just economically, but given our leadership role in the Pacific right now, that we don't vacate that space and allow China to establish the rules. The argument on the other side is every single trade deal like this has cost American workers their jobs. How, why is this any different? When you look at it, it has a lot of the same features yeah. as some of those past deals. You know, Greg, I think there's some confusion between trade and trade agreements. Uh, the truth is we're already trading with every nation in the world, except for three. We're not trading with Cuba, North Korea, or Iran. But every other country, we are trading with them. The problem is we're trading with them with no rules, with no agreement in place for us to enforce if they are exploiting worker rights, if they aren't abiding by environmental standards, if they're not uh, dealing with human rights issues that we care about, that we're negotiating in the trade agreements. Of the 20 bilateral trade agreements that we are a party to, we're actually running a trade surplus with those nations in manufacturing and agriculture and services. Does so that equate have... to jobs, though? I mean, I understand that the financials of it is a, it's a positive in terms of the yeah. balance sheet, but right. is that a positive in terms of the jobs for American workers? Well, listen, if you're selling more to them than you're bringing into our country, that's what a surplus is. And we are with those 20 nations we have an agreement with. That works pretty well for us. but. There's a lot of complexity in the job market. Technology displacement right now, advanced manufacturing. You go into any plant today, and there's a lot more automation on those factory floors than it was before. And that's just a trend that we're seeing economically. So I think we need to do two things well. Great. One, we need to get good agreements that are enforceable, that we do enforce the terms of the agreements when we have them in hand. And secondly, I think we have to be more sensitive to the job displacement that's occurring, even outside of trade because there's a lot of churning out there right now. A lot of it's technology displacement. And we ought to have a robust job training education program to help worker, uh, workers develop the skills they need so they can get integrated in the 21st century global economy. So they, they too have a place and they can compete. Uh, that's something I've been working on actually in a bipartisan fashion of what that type of jobs program would look like in order to meet the job openings that do exist.